So I believe this is the February Palafel Packs box. Let's open it up, find out what's inside, and try and make something with it. All right, first things first, amongst the red maggots, we have a small plastic palette with ridges to hold like a paintbrush. Kinda like that. What the heck are these? Ooh, pretty colors. Oh wait, these crayons. <laughs> so apparently these are art crayon. I'm, I'm trying to say it properly. I say crayon, but I know. Crayon. And then underneath that, it calls it a watercolor crayon. So maybe they're water soluble. You can like blend it with water, which is what we'll need the cup for. So hopefully these aren't like uh, the crayons you had in grade school. And no hate on crayons. Like I used to schnitz a lot of them, but <laughs> I've just moved on to different things. Cut. Get out of there. So there's four colors in this pack. We have sky blue, gentian, I don't know, lavender, and then plum. Lavender is just so pretty, look at it. They're also individually sealed. The amount of plastic, seriously. <laughs> it's got a cap. It's got like a little grip for your fingies. Um, I don't know if you like rotate it to make more crayon come out. Oh, you do. What are we gonna be using with these? More of them. <laughs> My excitement's off the charts. <laughs> Although I've never used water soluble crayons, so it'll still be a fun experiment. And you've got sunshine yellow, kiwi, apple, and aqua green. Let me just put these in rainbow color. It'll take me like two seconds. Well, there's a tutorial video on how to use them. Well, let me fail first before I look for help. <laughs> I'm hoping it's pretty straightforward. Do you have anything for like liner or... Oh, we got a paintbrush. The Princeton Select Round number six. Oh, and we have a white crayon. When I was in second grade, we had a class called phonics and we had a phonics book and you could buy either the colored version or the black and white version, which was cheaper, which was obviously the one my school had. So all of the pictures for each phonics lesson were just line art. And so if you finish early comparatively to the class, then the teacher would tell you to get out your crayons and color in all the pictures. Like there'd be like a hat or a cat. And the teacher would always say, if something's white, don't leave it. Use your white crayon. It's in the box for a reason. And for uh, some reason I just loathed that. I don't know what it was. I, f I was like the lazy colorer. I don't know. <laughs> this is a fun story for you, I guess. Oh, and we have a black crayon as well. We can use that maybe for some dimension and some depth, and maybe a little bit of line art if that works out that way. I have my doubts. All right, do we have anything else that's considered an art supply? So here's the menu, it lists the art supplies. So we have the Marabou art crayon, five color sets, and then we have the black and white, which each Retail for $3.99, seriously? Well, these are these are definitely not my grade school crayons then. You get, what, 24 for 99 cents? And then finally, an eight by 10 Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor Paper. Ready Cut Watercolor. Must be important stuff, they put it in a little wrapper. Oh, it's not a pad. Oh, I thought it was gonna be a pad of paper. It's just actually Ready Cut Paper. Now I get it, I get it, okay. So it's cold pressed, ready for frames and mats. So there are 10 sheets. Whoa, there's a little window. That's the kind of attention to detail I like to see. That's thick stuff. How uh, much is the mag gets in the window? All right, so I guess we gotta swatch them. I've kind of learned my lesson and we should swatch on the paper we're planning on using. And they gave us 10 sheets, so got lots of room for mistakes. Put a little water in here. Let's start with the black one. Ooh, those are smooth. These are like oil pastels. Forgot I didn't open all these. <laughs> Shoot. One second. And we're back. Let's go ahead and swatch them all. I really kind of enjoy how they glide across the paper. They're very oily and soft, but it's hard to get any kind of detail with such a blunt edge, you know? And then once we have all these swatched, we can add water and see what happens. All right. Oh, wait, white. This is for Mrs. Hunter. There you go. Oh, the other thing she'd say, she's like, And I'll know if you used the white crayon, I'll use my fingernail and I'll scratch it. A little bit wider. Let's do the light color first. I can't see it. Let's try the yellow. Hey, that's pretty vibrant. It doesn't look like it's losing too much of its zhuzh, but it is getting a little transparent, obviously. So it looks like you probably can just use these like you would use watercolors. Then obviously you can get some more kind of fun abstract shapes 
if you use them directly out of the barrel. Ooh, this one's not quite coming off as well. So what I do is I wet the brush, I dab a little extra moisture off, then I rub around over the crayon, and drag it down. And then you get a lot of pigment. Lavender's not spreading as well leeway, but the black works real nice. Lavender just isn't really working for me. Come on, I was rooting for you. Okay, we're getting a little bit of warping in the paper, but you probably can see it from the other camera angle. So I probably should tape down whatever we do our finished illustration on. So let me kind of just, hmm, actually I actually have no idea where to start. Ew, there's that fun crayon texture everybody loves. <laughs> just to kind of get a feel for how they might work, why don't I try and just do what I would normally do with any old art supply and just, I don't know, like draw a face? Yeah. <laughs> Real imaginative here. Kind of sketch it out. Oh dear. <laughs> Not a whole lot of control. Plain old portrait. Beautiful. Kind of trying to use the edge of it to get a more fine point by holding it at an angle. Also probably, I think for the finished illustration, we're gonna want to fill the whole paper just because you can't really get a lot of fine lines with these, depending on what subject matter we finally decide to draw. Ooh, erasing. I wonder what we can do about erasing, if that's even possible. Or if I should erase the thought from my mind. And then maybe we can try layering some other colors. Oh yeah, like if you fill a whole section in crayon and then apply water, can we like fill in the little crevices that we miss? Oh, you can kind of get more crisp lines. So like up here, I was dragging the color away from where we applied it, but like this is just going over where we have applied it. Interesting. Can we use the white to erase? Not really. You could use it to blend out to a lighter tone, but not really erase. Now what happens if we apply a ton of color here, kind of use it like a palette, and kind of try to lift it from that, like apply lighter tones of it, like watercolor? Hmm. Hey, it's kind of working. Can I blend out this line that I don't need anymore? I just want to blend it out of existence, although it was helpful. It served its purpose. I kind of like the way it looks with that because it's kind of more pastel. But it's still just so splotchy. I wonder if there's a way to kind of avoid that. Use the darker color too. Use that as a palette. If I can use the fine pointiness of this brush to do some detail work. Oh no, it was still wet. <gasps> She's crying. That'll blend right out. Obviously there's times when you want to apply it when it's still wet, but if you want to get those fine details, wait for it to dry and i also kind of want to just draw something else while i'm waiting this time i'm going to try sketching with pencil and see how much that interferes with how, how the crayons work sketch something in here should i do something with details and see what happens i just kind of want to like push the limits of the supplies before i decide what i can and can't do because if i just decide oh well i can't do this and that how will i ever know what i can do if I don't even try, you know? And let's uh, throw in some, I kind of like this palette sort of idea, but I also wanna you know, throw some color on there. Okay, so it doesn't quite cover pencil, so this probably will end up looking real gross, but that's the point to find out. Actually, I don't think it looks that bad. I mean, not with the purple at least. Kind of like the way the graphite also picks up the water a little and kind of blends in. Probably muddies it, but what can you do? Purple skin, why not? I don't mind the look of this for like a sketchbook kind of sketch experimentation thing, but for finished illustration purposes, I don't think this is going to work out. Let's see how the yellow works. Yellow is usually pretty transparent and it looks like it is. Yellow and graphite don't quite mix. <laughs> Ew. Ooh, I wonder if I can make it look kind of shiny by leaving a space. Don't really have to worry about the graphite here. It's only going to help us try to blend this out by like losing the water, cleaning the brush. I feel like it needs some more purple. I wonder if I can blend in just a slight amount of purple to kind of like show a little difference between the legs because they're getting a little lost in there. Does that create any kind of contrast? I wonder if we could just add a little bit of black to this mixture. A little goes a long way. Be careful. Yeah, there we go, that's showing up. 
kind of surprised at how much I'm kind of liking this. And I think the reason is because usually what I hate about crayons and pastels and oil pastels and all those things is that you can't get fine details. But since these are water soluble, you can just use a paintbrush and get her done. <laughs> so what happens if I like take this black, scribble all around in here, I add a little water. Will this give me some nice line art? Not quite as pigmented as I need. Maybe if I add less water next time. Since these art supplies are kind of like, you know, big and bounding and they're hard to get those fine details, I think it would be fun to draw someone's like super flowy. So if I decide to do a person, I think it'd be really fun if it's like a character that's really flowy. That way, if the color kind of goes outside of the lines, it kind of fits the theme of everything. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Let me erase some of the graphite so it doesn't make a mess. It'd be kind of fun as if it was like a gradient, like the top's kind of yellow. We just kind of go rainbow. Yeah, I haven't really tried blending these that well. Let's blend that out. Oh, wait, I need some water again. I'm gonna focus on the areas where the colors kind of overlap. Actually, I think we're just gonna have to go the whole way. <laughs> what am I talking about? But then once we switch to another color, I shouldn't probably go back up too far. We want to keep just pulling the colors down. See how this looks. I want to make sure I get rid of all those like little edges. It kind of looks like artifacting. <laughs> I just want to clean those up because those are something I do not like. And I wonder if I have like the yellow hair. If I have like some really long yellow hair, have it just come down behind everything. Pose could use a little bit more work, but I think the concept is good. I really like the way the colors kind of blend together. So I do want to definitely take advantage of that. So I'm thinking we should just try this. And if it doesn't work, then try something else. <laughs> but like switch to a whole new piece of paper, probably tape it down in case I get really crazy with it. All right, it's a little crooked, but uh, you'll just learn to love it. So I think I'll just follow that same order of operations. Sketch with the pencil, erased most of it so it doesn't blend with the crayons, and then uh, add the color. I'm gonna copy some of the pose, but then, you know, switch up other parts. So like we have the head up here, I had the shoulder kind of coming up with the arm, and then I had the other arm kind of like going this way. Body, I wonder if I could twist it. So like currently it's pointing this way. What if I twist the body? Mm, is that possible? So if I twist it that way, then I can like bring this knee up that way. And then this leg can keep doing its thing. And then this, that way it kind of like fills the page. Maybe some hair. And then we can have all that crayons going everywhere. Go in and figure this out. Kind of a second pass at it. If the shoulders are really that low, then the whole head needs to be moved down. The face. Now the head's real small, but it probably won't stay that way. Yeah, that arm. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> the back leg first, and then this leg. I kind of wanted it kind of just following along. Somebody's having fun with a snowmobile. Honestly, the whole legs I'm not thrilled about. So let me try just erasing that and trying again. There, we got hips here. So maybe if I just let them lay a little flatter. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. What if I bring the legs apart a little? It's kind of like. That's kind of fun. It's like skipping. And this leg can come like this and then backwards. Right? Right? <laughs> I'm asking you like you can help me in this instance. Hmm. Let me think on this. See, whenever I start working on the face, it like loses all of its dynamicness. Like before it looked like it was looking up, but now it's just it's getting flatter. I think I'll just bring this leg further back. Well, I don't want any tangents though. Uh, er. I think we're just abandoning a lot of space here. Like, what do I put up here? Or if I just like fill more of this bottom section, then having some space up at the top is kind of 
want to just a breather for your eyes. I'm gonna need to move the elbow up on the arm. I do run a bit of a risk of overworking this sketch, but since the art supplies are kind of less controllable, I don't think that'll be a problem because once I like go over this with this, it's obviously going to become a lot looser. I think having some good groundwork to begin with might be in our best interests, or at least my best interest. The outcome of this has no effect on you. <laughs> it's just me. But I like to think we're in this together. I'm gonna give her a visor just because I want something pointing up this way. Now she's a fast food employee. Woo! Or a golfer. Shout out to all my friends who worked in food service. High five. This back ponytail. I gave her two pigtails for some reason. And I'm struggling. I'm trying not to draw too dark because I want to still be able to erase, you know? Ooh, what if we give her like some like just really simple clothing and we'll leave those paper white? And then keep the gradient just on the skin. And I try to do that like paper white. So there'd be no lines here. No lines here. This would all be just the paper. You'd obviously see this line because we have... Although now if I do do this, do do, <laughs> I can have the hair come further down this way. That way you don't lose quite as much of those curves, you know? Make sure the big toe's on the right side of the foot. <laughs> I've made that mistake before. Now she kind of looks like a tennis player. I could give her a racket. All right, all right. I think <laughs> I'm ready to commit <sighs> to the colors. God, I just want to like say my farewells to this sketch because I really like the sketch. <sighs> Bye, babe. So next step is to erase. I just want this to turn out well. I feel invested. This at the bottom. There's our gradient. So in our little concept here, I used yellow for the face, but since I'm using yellow for the hair, I think I'm going to just start with the light green. Our kiwi color. Oh, this feels wrong. I'm. <laughs> oh hey. That's nice. But this just doesn't feel right. Let's mix it with water first. Maybe we can blend into darker at the bottom. Just till I'm I'm ready, you know? I'm just I'll see that's plenty dark. Especially for like a first layer. I might add a little bit of yellow though at the top. Just to start that gradient. Okay, now I think I'm gonna go ahead for the skin start being a little bit more assertive with it. Okay, let's do this one arm on the right. Get a feel for it. Clean up the edges, blend it out. I think I made it more colors. Oh, it's probably because I started on green instead of yellow. So the hands actually ended up being blue instead of green. Definitely want to add more green here. It's too light. It looks kind of cool in contrast to where I blended it out more. I'm wondering when it dries if I'll be able to like kind of go over it again. I'm kind of glad I can still see a decent amount of the sketch after this first pass. I wanted there to be like lace at the bottom of this top so that like the color kind of pokes through, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get detailed enough, especially since I don't quite know what I want the lace to look like. like I want kind of scallops. Well, we'll just avoid these scallops and then inside there, maybe later with the paintbrush, I can do some little dots and such. And then we need the aqua green or blend those out. And maybe do some fine detail work there. I don't even know what colors on my paintbrush at this point, but it looks like it works well enough. <laughs> Gotta make sure I follow these lines pretty well because I put a lot of effort into figuring out where these lines are gonna be. So then from this color, it's gonna start turning into a more blue. So we can have a little bit of this right on the edge of the skirt. It's aqua green down lower on this leg so that they're not in the same seam. And then, so this one will start being blue. I'm kind of separated. Try our best to blend this out. <laughs> Let's start with this leg, our blue leg. I suppose I could have had her colors kind of change up. That would have been kind of fun. Maybe like one leg was blue, one leg was green. Fade almost into a white foot. Kind of like the face got lighter. I'll have the 
feet get lighter too. That way there's contrast between the ankle there and the foot. We'll see how that looks when it dries. Now let's try to blend this one out. Oh, kind of went outside the line. Ooh. Ooh. That's not so bad. A little crunchy around the edges still. I'm wondering if I did do another pass, if it would eliminate some of that or if I'm stuck with it because there's still a decent amount going on there. <laughs> let's start adding in some of the hair. So like this section while that's drying and I'll try my best not to put my hand in it. Hmm, I think I'm gonna need to do some shading here to kind of keep those shapes that I made. Maybe mixing with purple? Although purple and yellow are complementary colors, so that's gonna make a gray anyway. Maybe just the most subtle amount of green because then it kind of fits it into our blue-green color scheme anyway. Just do what I'm able for now, I guess. And we'll figure it out. <laughs> Hair looks like cheese right there. If I really blend her out there. Eh, me. Me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I also want to like work on the face some more, but I just want to get like the first pass done and let that dry. Most of it is dry because <laughs> it's taken so long. Don't want to get too close to the arms either. Or we might lift some of that green when we don't want it yet. Definitely don't want to put too much green up here, even though that's where it needs the most shading, just because the face is so green, you know? Don't want it to blend. I really want to clean up the legs. They look real messy. Layering more crayon. Maybe we can get like a smooth texture. Well, that actually looks kind of cool. I never did that in our little like practice -y bits. Layering the crayon on top of what we've already... Oh, that's so much smoother. Then we can just blend those out together without water. Hey, me likey. But then we'll just need to blend it out with some water near the foot. Okay, I think I'm figuring these out. I don't know if we add water on top of this. That'll be too much. That's way smoother than it was before. Should do that for the top half too. There's actually a third color in there, but I can make it with just these two by blending them out. Wow, that looks so much better. I'm kind of amazed. Let's see if it fixes over here. Obviously I can't get the crisp edges, so we'll have to go over it with water eventually, but we have a much flatter, more appealing color to me. Blend out the edge. Love it. Now what do I do with the face though? I might just have to darken it up. Let's kind of slowly build up the color. I think that added enough where it doesn't look like it's separate from the rest of the body. So that's a plus. Oops, that was the wrong green. Ooh, shoot, and I didn't even get it in the right spot. Give Nyx this. All right, we'll leave that be. See if we can fix it later. We can do a second layer over the hair. See if we can clean that up too. Oh, that looks so much nicer. It's so smooth. It looks less like, you know, a childhood crayon and more like a professional art supply. I can't say this um, <clears throat> design on this looks all that professional, but it's fine. We're not here to judge. It just comes naturally. A million times, yes, so much better. Ugh. Green. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the same thing with the green that I did with the black. Just a little bit of water, just so I can shade this hair a little bit more easily without having to draw directly on it and creating those harsh lines that I don't love. Ooh, look at that. Wow, it's working, it's working. It is not quite blending with the color underneath of it. Feels waxy, but they're both waxy, so it shouldn't be a problem, should it? Blend that out. And we can also go over that with the yellow crayon again. Just giving up trying to say crayon. It takes too much brain power. I'm actually really pleasantly surprised with the way the art's turning out. It's kind of fun just like taking my time and experimenting with it. I still think it has a bit of a childlike appearance, but the more I polish it, the better it's looking. Maybe add a little bit of blue. This darker section. Gotcha. Shh, shh. Be quiet, you're annoying me. This is turning out well. Ooh, okay. What's the next step? I think I should wait for it to completely dry and then try to do a little bit of a line art with our purple and black. I wonder if we can add like fun purple shapes. Use what's left, add a little shading here. Oh, we're gonna have to fill that in too. Well, now I think I definitely have to wait. Oh, the hardest part of art, waiting for things to dry. Okay, let's try and make the line art here. What's the recipe? <laughs> we'll need a little bit of uh, purple. Actually a lot of purple. 
and then some black just to really deepen that color and add just a smidge of water and mix it all up oh but when i try to do fine points where do i start I honestly don't really want that much line art on this. I kind of like the texture of it, but for the face, I'll make an exception. If I get up in close here. We got some eyelashes. Okay, okay, okay. Let's dip, get this a little more saturated with pigment. Oh, she doesn't even have eyebrows. I might just draw them in with this color. So I think it's too late to make them yellow. But I need a pupil in there. This is where I'm struggling because I feel like I need a lot of detail in here. There we got the visor. Do I want to do any shading in the white section? Guess so because I started doing it. <laughs> I wonder if I can clean up this edge here. That sounded like I said Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> the edge here. It's a little difficult to add like shading and stuff just because her skin is a gradient. <laughs> now do we want any other purple anywhere? It's like the only color we haven't used. That might just be overkill. I think that might be the max of detail I can get in the face. I keep going, I keep saying that, but then I add a little bit more. This isn't from the box, so it's technically cheating. Actually, I don't think it's cheating to add. No, actually, yeah, I don't know. I just want to add like speckles of magic particles. It's just a preference of mine. I think it just always makes art look more interesting. You know what, I am going to add the purple. Screw it. Here we go. Find the pointiest edge on this. I can get them right where I want them. I'm thinking one right here. And then we'll layer that again. It was better with the crayon getting a perfect circle. Kind of just make them look a little bit random, but purposeful. It kind of looks like they're drifting off into the distance. Hmm. It's kind of hard to have them interact with the body at all just because I can't get any sort of detail. Here we can do here. There's a pretty straight line to deal with. Hey! I kind of like that. If I put one right here. Let's try and smooth these guys out. Follow that same principle. There's a lot of like dusty, waxy bits. <gasps> ah, yes. That is just so much nicer. I don't know if you can tell the difference on screen, but it just gets so much smoother. Trying to cut corners while drawing my circles. <laughs> okay, I think we did two too many circles. Now it's a little busy. Why do I keep adding more? It's not helping. <laughs> I just want it more concentrated on this side, but it's hard with the hair in the way. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Best I can do. Gotta go ahead and remove the tape. That's the fun part, right? I think this was the last one I did. Ooh, hey, not too bad. Some areas it did get underneath. Oh, there it didn't. Nice, look at that edge. Yay! I didn't rip the paper. I probably should have colored in like a light wash of purple before I removed the tape. That way there'd be a difference between the border. This is what I came up with with the watercolor crayons. Those, those are some tricky art supplies, but I feel like, I don't know, I've done the best I've ever done with anything that's like sort of pastel-like, crayon-like, you know? Here's where I was uh, experimenting with them. I definitely like them better than uh, Crayola crayons, <laughs> just because you can mix them with water and you can get smaller details with a paintbrush. I wonder if I could just... Oop, it exploded on me. No! Just a big smile. Okay, well... <laughs> I'll fix that later. But this is basically what it'll look like. I think my only, like, real big regret is just leaving the background white. So I guess all that's left to do is to thank you guys for watching and also send a big thank you to Palletful for sending me this box. If you're looking for more information on Palletful packs, I'll have a link in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!